And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we're going to start with the carbohydrate session. We'll be looking at carbohydrates, uh, monosaccharides, polysaccharides, and uh, all that's related to the, the carbohydrates. Now we'll start with the 7.1 and 7.2 with law. So 7.1. Thank you, Maria. Uh, let's start. Awalan, carbs, they are. Let's, let's lay this down. Uh, in an organized way, come on. What, uh, what is biochemistry in general? What are we looking at? We're looking at things that make up our body. We're looking at chemistry related to biology, right? Come on. So what are the main components of our bodies when we're talking about macromolecules? Protein. Proteins, lipids. carbohydrates, nucleic. lipids, and nucleic acids. Come on. Uh, carbohydrates obviously is one of the most important of these and it is the the most actually abundant macromolecule in the world. It's 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 everywhere. What, what do we think when we think carbohydrates? What are you guys thinking? Sugar. Sugar, صح? Uh, sugar. Where do we get it? What type of sugar? مثلا, is it just the sugar that we eat? Bread. Bread. So we're talking glucose, right? Uh, bread. Anything basically. Uh, that we're eating has these carbohydrates and there are obviously different types we're gonna talk about them their reactions all that Awashi, let's look at the structure when we're talking about carbohydrates what do we have uh, this over here these are the two types of carbohydrates they are um, basically polyhydroxyaldehydes and ketones now we remember from organic chemistry what aldehydes and ketones are right Aldehydes, which are double bond O, H, and then ketones, we have C, double bond O, R, R, right? Hon, what did we add? What's the new thing? We added OH groups. Uh -huh. This is why it's polyhydroxy. Hydroxy, OH. So we're adding OH groups to these organic compounds, the hinden aldehydes and ketones. We start counting from three. This is the shortest carbohydrates. These are the shortest carbohydrates that exist. And the shortest aldehyde is called glyceraldehyde. Easy. Do you feel like you've heard it before? It's going to come up. Definitely. Definitely, it's going to come up a lot. This is a special one. You'll have to remember it. And then for the ketone, it's dihydroxyacetone. So it's acetone with dihydroxy. Easy, yeah? Uh, and then we move on to four carbons, five carbons, and six carbons. But these are the most important ones that we're going to talk about a lot. But we have two types of naming, as usual. What do we have usually? We have the common names, so, and then we have the IPAC names. Uh, the IPAC names is that we're going to name them systemically. Uh, we need to know chem carbon, tri, tetra, penta, nafsushi. And then we need to know if it's an aldehyde or a ketone. If it's an aldehyde, we put aldo. Is that a ketone? We put keto. And then for all carbohydrates, we put os. O S E. So glucose, galactose. These are the stuff that we know. Or aldo triose, keto triose. In here, there are three carbons. So without looking, is that I tell you uh, an aldehyde? Okay, this carbohydrate is an aldehyde. Who it has? Six carbons. Uh, how would you name it? Glucose. It is glucose, but this is our naming it systemically. Aldo hexos, bizzot. And the same thing, bizzot. You're right. So, next is she, aldo pentosis, keto pentosis, aldo hexosis, and so on. Mahano uh, afano. One other thing you need to know. All our sugars are de-stereoisomers. Remember this command? Command organic chemistry. What do you mean? Explain to the left. Exactly. We have our chiral carbon and then the extra group, the OH one, it is to the right. All of them are like this. What do you mean? Something called protein. Protein. Proteins, exactly. But you need to you need to memorize this. I can give you a couple of tips and try to trick you, but you won't get tricked. Inshallah. Okay. هذول هن our uh, carbohydrates 
Muhammad. You can see if he checks beside the ones that you need to memorize, you don't need to memorize all of them. These are the common names. Tamam? What's important to take from this slide? Hala ka, ka structure, look at this. Masal we have D glucose, D manos, D galactose. Ka structure, at the end of the day, you're going to have to memorize it. But we're going to try to make life easier for you. Tamam? Uh, it's easier for us to try to memorize numbers or letters when we memorize uh, straight take structures. But to try to break it down, for example, glucose, is, can I write? Sorry. Yes, till it starts to work. Yeah. Should be at the top. Pull it down. It's quite tough. Pull it down. <laughs> So, see how I wrote one and two? You're gonna imagine, and you took the carbohydrate. Yeah, I think I can write straight up. So, so glucose come carbon. And what is it, an aldehyde or a ketone? So what am I gonna draw for? Double bond OH. Hello. What's going to be the, the hard part? Hard part. This is going to you're gonna get it, inshallah. Where is the OH going? So, now we know that every carbon has an OH group. After carbon, do we really care where the OH is going? No, it's not carbon. It's not carbon. So when it's gonna be H two and OH, we don't care. See now, we have these four carbons given us. I want you to imagine you know, there is a line in the middle and home there is number one and home number two. So any, any OH that's here, we will name it one. Anything home will be two. But look at the structure of glucose. It starts like this. OH starts with two and then one and then two and then two. So it's two, one, two, two. It's like a code. Yeah, and no, we're doing programming. So you memorize two one two two. No matter what you need, so you don't need to go right left. You draw it, right one one two. But in two one two two, you can put it down. We can do the same thing, for example, for manus. Manus, we just change one thing, right? Do you know where this goes? This one. Then hit the home. Pasar two manus. One one two two. So you can memorize the thing, and then when you whenever you're Going to write it down, you can do it really quickly. But then I try to memorize the shape. In the first one or the second one, you memorize the code. Tamam? Okay. So this one, we have the manus. We just change the OH from here to here. Right? Do you know what we call this? Between glucose and manus, we just change one thing. What do we call it? Epimers. Epimers. Exactly. What are epimers? We took the different types of isomers, right? What are epimers? Diastereomers are different from one. Tamam, exactly. So you need to diastereomers. Yeah, not mirror, but chiral. Bravo, perfect. And then they're chiral, but they are not mirror images of each other. One type of diastereomers, the one we just said about that, is epimers. Epimers, he can learn the same thing, and then we change just one carbon, one chiral carbon chain is changed. Like, for example, glucose and manos, as we said, or Glucose and galactose. Why is this important? Because many people ask you, you know, uh, what's the relationship between, for example, glucose and manos? What will you tell them? They are C addition, C two epimers. That's how. Well, that's what we call it. يعني هنا at carbon at carbon number two, they they're different. So they're C two epimers, for example. Okay, and then you can do. مع the other ones. تمام. I think that's all you need to know from this. والباقي it's as I said you have to memorize their structures أكيد أكيد and know them by heart يعني. And you will know that يعني هلا we're saying memorize memorize. But as you're studying it will come naturally I promise. يعني آخر شيء خلص it's you're not gonna think about it. تمام. Okay هلا cyclic structures. دائما لما we draw glucose, galactose, fructose, anything we draw them as a cyclic structure. ليش؟ لأنه هن naturally in our body most of the time, they are cyclic. مو مفتوحين as we saw them. تمام؟ 
So uh, how does this happen? This is the reaction that happens over here. Remember, we took it to come on in organic, acetals. Remember? Yes. How does this happen? Bikun anna. Hon, we know we have aldehyde or ketone. So we have C double bond open, sa? Hon, we have an alcohol, and they are in a fluid environment. Shall I say, mom? Right, they're going to react with each other. So here it's the same structure reacting mahala to form inside. This is kind of tricky because you you memorize this way. Tiju, you want to put it in a cyclic structure, you won't know where do I put the OH or Right? But do you want I want you to think about it this way. Hello number is Mojudin. We are going to react our carbon ma il last uh, chiral carbon. How we ignore it. We're going to react with carbon number five. The and it's gonna close. So when it closes, it's going to look like this. if it's up or down, right? But it might be either this or this. Now we have another type of isomers, chunan anomers this one. Alpha and beta anomers. But come on, this gives us another category to look at when we're looking at a structure. So always she can now talk about the isomers that here we have the chiral carbon, one of the chiral carbons with gyrene. Now we have anomers here. It's the same molecule. بعد ما عملت cyclic structure, it changed. So we have two options: yeah, I'm this, yeah, I'm this. But is this really significant in our body? I mean, for example, the isomers. Yes, there are enzymes in an enzyme for glucose and enzyme for galactose. But is there an enzyme for, for example, beta uh, glucose or alpha glucose? No, there is not. No, there is not. In our body, they're in equilibrium. without enzymes, back and forth. And here, it's it's significant for us to know. Let us know. Where? How? How do we draw it? For all But actually, in our bodies, it's not significant. Oh, how, how do we name it? Uh, it's alpha, it's beta. How did I memorize it? Uh, in our minds, alpha is always for so Alpha is the best. Here, they didn't want to oblige by the rule. I don't know. Alpha is beta. Okay, so we said that. Animals, uh, okay. Come on, another helpful thing is that OH group was on the right in the non cyclic structure. Uh, it will be below the ring. If that was on the left, it will be above the ring. It's a rule. Whenever you see a structure, you can do it. Is it up or down? So right, where is it? Below. Come on, I can still This rule is the opposite. So it's Yes. But I don't It's not. It doesn't exist. Okay, hey, the mutual rotation is what I said. In the alpha and beta, they keep on switching. In a mixture, they're in equilibrium. Ma fi wahda ekter min taniya. Yani, but it's not significant. Hey, the ketones. Yeah, this is kaman important. You know, when you're looking at a ketone, a hami ketone, hay kun shakla ghair shwe. Do you see it? In li tahat zay fa. It's gonna look like this. Not like the shusma, the aldehydes. Why is that? Who what reacted with what? With the double bond. So when the double bond hone, man, the first carbon, the second carbon. Why? Because we're a ketone. So the double bond not on the first carbon, like the aldehyde, but on the second one. So when we form a ring, it's not going to be be on the six sides a hexagon. It's going to be. And the alpha and beta, you're looking at the OH, you're not looking at the other group. Here it's H and OH, here it's OH and a whole alpha whole group. So you're focusing on OH. Is it for a beta? Is it for a alpha? Do you have any questions on this? It might be a little jarred. It's good? Okay, here are the reactions. Usually that's like the hardest part, but soon it's easy. General reactions. I know it's oxidation. Come on, it's all organic. We're just applying it here. 
اوكسيديشن لما عندنا الالكهول لما وي اوكسيدايز شو بصير؟ يا يا هي عندنا بالاوكسيديشن ات جوز من الكهول الدهيد كيتون بعدين كاربوكسيليك اسيد الدهيد او كيتون لما وي اوكسيدايز شو بصير؟ كيتون كان وي اوكسيدايز؟ لا بالضبط برافو فأكيد هون نحن we have a lot of alcohols we have uh, an aldehyde group ketones ما بنمثل الأكسيديشن فأكيد حيكون عنا أكسيديشن reactions uh, هون نحن we're taking بس على الجلوكوز بس هاي this happens with anyone I'll explain على الجلوكوز and then we'll see their names in general تمام أول واحدة uh, gluconic acid شو هي gluconic acid يعني what is this شو كانت هاي من زمان <تصفيق> كانت aldehyde شو عملنا لا oxidization ف what did we add we added OH group easy بدل ال H حطينا OH we oxidized it هاي صار اسمه gluconic acid it's an acid it makes sense yeah بعدين we have glucuronic acid what did we oxidize هون last بدل أول واحدة ضل عنا من فوق aldehyde ومن تحت صار عنا an acid صح؟ so صار في عنا فوق aldehyde تحت acid صار اسمه glucuronic acid I memorized it إنه uronic urine down تمام so it's up and down <تصفيق> and then we have glucuric acid where what happened we oxidize both فوق وتحت like an arc فوق وتحت so هون ال aldehyde and the alcohol both oxidized But these are the three situations where we're going to have any type of oxidization going on. Okay, شو اسمه عن هدول؟ ال شو اسمه؟ مثل gluconic acid اسمه aldonic acid اسمه كلهن aldonic acid. مثلا إذا it was galactose what will it be? Galactonic acid. Yeah. إذا ال terminal OH مثل glucuronic acid شو اسمه؟ Uronic acid. واخر واحدة اسمون الديريك اسيدز يعني بريتي بريتي ايزي يا سيلف اكسبلوناتوري سو هلا ذير از انذر رياكشن ذات مايت هابن ويتش از كمان اوكسيديشن بس فيها شوية تويست وات هابنز بصير عندنا رياكشن بين لوك يو كان يو سي هاو ذس واز كان يو سي وات ذس از Where anything was. <laughs> okay, how many how many carbons do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, so as you open it up, technically, it's a reaction between home and home. So, mom, pass. Pass. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You have to memorize what happens, basically. We see a reaction between. ال ال شو اسمه كاربينين جروب مع ان الكهول اللي من جوا ال الستركتشر سو هون كانت مع ذس كاربين ونحن عندنا الكهولز 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 سو وي جست رياكتد وذ ذيم عادي تو فورم وات تو فورم شو اسمها هي لما بيكون عندنا دبل بوند او اند او استر سايكليك استر اكزاكتلي سو وي فورم ذا سايكليك استر باي رياكتينج وات رياكتينج الكاربينيل جروب مع ان الكهول من الستركتشر نفسه فبصير عندنا رينج هيك شكل رينج بين الستركتشر لجوا مو اول وحده مع اخر وحده لك وي توكت اباوت ذا ريت هون سو وي جيت ان استر سايكليك استر اند ذس از ريلي امبورتنت بي اور بودي تو دو سبيسيفيك رياكشنز اهم وحده از اسكوربيك اسيد اسكوربيك اسيد از وات فايتامين سي تمام Vitamin C, which is a very, very important vitamin in our body. You'll talk about it later. You'll study all about it. But it's not enough. Does it? Does it make sense? Ma fi da alam li shein. Tu bas memorize. Inno bsi reaction bsi isma lactone. That's all you need to know. Sorry. And memorize the example is vitamin C. Tamam. Hala reducing sugars. This is this will keep on coming up. Kti lim jib kini jib usaab li mtahana. What do you What do you think this is? Do you remember in the lectures? No? Okay. So, the sugars, when we say reducing, 
reduction oxidization and then reactions in the ضد بعض, right? When we're reducing something, we got oxidized. When we oxidize something, we are getting reduced. صح? هدول our sugars in general, especially all monosaccharides, they're all called reducing sugars. ليش? لأن they can get oxidized. فلما they get oxidized, what are they doing? Let's see تاني. They're reducing it. Then they're reducing sugars. تمام? Because of the way their structure is built. So, uh, why is this important? This is important in the we want to test مثلا, the blood or the urine for any type of sugar. We test that it's reducing. We, we do a test basically where we can tell uh, is that it's present or it's not present because of this property. And no, they are all reducing. But you really need to know and know all sugars, all monosaccharides are reducing sugars. Huh? Uh, okay, tamam. so they're all oxidizing agents. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is called the, the reagent that we use it to see is that they're reducing. Well, it's my Benedict's reagent. Come on, you talked about it organic, huh? Mm -hmm. I think so. No, I have said, yeah, let's see. Benedict's reagent, we talked about it in organic, yeah. No, okay, no. هلا اوكي لازم تفصلوا بين الريديوسنج وال هون الريديوسنج شوجرز والريدكشن لما الريدكشن هن نفسهم صار معهم ريدكشن ريديوسنج هن they got oxidized by reducing the other molecule do you get it do you get the difference yeah I didn't get reducing sugar so you didn't get it نحن قلنا these sugars get oxidized easily صح she only reducing or oxidizing this one. Reducing as an S and reducing oxygen. The result. Exactly. So in the hadole, these these sugars, look at the structure before and after. What happened to our sugar? What happened? It got oxidized. Shu said these structures. Reduced. They got reduced. So then what did they do? They reduced the other molecules. Then they're reducing sugars. When you an oxidizing agent, they reduce it. That's all. But you just, you know, you don't ask me to tell me the mechanism of the reduction. Until now, you understand it. And when they get oxidized, we reduce the other. But all you need to know is that all monosaccharides are reducing sugars. هلا ليش ليش عم نقول all monosaccharides and we are gonna see no some disaccharides are not. and that's all you need to know. تمام. هلا reduction هن نفسهم they're getting reduced. مو getting oxidized. تمام. so what does that mean? an alcohol لما we reduce it شو بصير؟ remember? yes. لما we think about it we're reducing an alcohol. إلنا reduction is doing what? adding H O Removing the no, so but she has still alcohol. It's a radi. We're gonna remove the hay. I'm a high safety on the double bond. I'm gonna add an edge and an acid. Lama, we reduce it. Should be seed. But the hell, and I'm not sure. And I'm not in the home. We have metal a whole scale on an alcohol on an aldehydes ketones on an acids. This way, when we're going this way, we are oxidizing. When we're going this way, we are reducing. Always, hey, do you not know it by heart? When we are going this way to this way, we're oxidizing. When we're going this way to this way, we're reducing. Then and then. Whenever you see any type of reaction, where are we and what are we going to? We're reducing. It's super. Easy. What what was this in the man? It was glucose. So, for what was the product to be? Aldehyde. So, what happened? Alcohol. What did we do? We reduced it. So, this is what happens when you reduce sugars. We see you aldetols, metal glucotol. Yeah, or we call it sorbitol. Smart of sorbitol in Abel. Yes, and they use it as a sweetener. Yeah. 
فهنا they give you the sweet taste بس ما بيكونوا the actual sugar Lucticals here are used as commercial food uh, processing and pharmaceuticals تمام uh, as an alternative sweetener they are يعني very 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 used فايزي هنا they are basically هلا شو صارت an alcohol صح؟ it's, uh, it's basically just alcohol 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 بس نفس structure glucose nothing special about it هلا we have isomerization Isomerization, what are we doing? We're taking an isomer to another form. What are we we're talking about carbohydrates? What are the isomers? Aldehyde and ketone and epimers. But we're going to have the actions where we're taking, as we said, aldehydes to ketones and the actions where we're taking one epimer to the other epimer. And we have enzymes to do that. D minus and fructose. This is glucose. Is that we did it? We did it from aldehyde to ketone. It becomes fructose. And if we just changed as epimerization, it becomes mannose. So they found that when you put it in the incubator and put it in a normal solution, it will turn into both in a sort of equilibrium. فهي this is really important لأنه in our body مثلا أنا باكل ما باكل الأشياء اللي فيها fructose let's say تمام my body needs fructose it needs to find a way to get that molecule for me بس في طبعا complications that you كمان you talk about a lot later do you do you understand هذول do you want any further تمام okay this is just Showing you how these reactions take epimerization or the isomerization of aldehyde to ketone. You can see if we see an enzyme or whatever, the mechanism isn't really important here. Uh, the mechanism isn't really important here. They're just showing you that no, no glucose will turn into both. If you have an intermediate, do you really need to know it? Not really, just know the name. You could memorize this, this one. Yeah, it's not that important. And the side, what's this intermediate? The double bond is just the and the OH is the Then you have the double bond, since it's a fructose, and we know fructose is a ketone. Or what happens? We see a change in the in this carbon. But again, you just need to know the, the picture. Okay? تمام هلا استريفيكيشن ذس كمان از فيري امبورتنت لما يو غانا انديرستاند الميتابوليزم شو هي شو الاسترز؟ استرز استرز اللي هي في عنا ار او ار صح؟ شو الفرق بين الاسترز والايثرز والكلام ده؟ مو خلص بعدين ليش بنضل ما ضيع؟ Uh, okay, so why is this really important? We have glucose. Are you oriented on why it looks like that? No, it's not. So? Uh, because of the chair on the... The zabot, remember, in organic? Yeah. And no, this is glucose. What did we do here? What changed? We added the... We didn't add ATP, we added phosphate. We added phosphate. We removed the H and put the phosphate. When we have an R or R, what did we call it? Ester. So what did we do? Esterification. Why is this really, really important? Because you took the metabolism. So this has to click. These are very, very important. With all the reactions of the metabolism, with all the carbohydrates. Phosphorylation. Phosphorylation is one of the most, most, most important things. So you really need to know that this could happen. How is it happening? We're removing the hydrogen, we're putting phosphate, we're removing phosphate, we're removing the phosphate, we're removing the phosphate, we're removing the ATP. So when we have phosphorylation, there are certain situations where it's not like that, but most of the time, phosphorylation, especially if we have hexokinase, fructokinase, anything with a kinase, you know what kinase is, right? There are enzymes that phosphorylate, they take phosphate from ATP, they make what? ADP. ADP. And they put the phosphate. It has a lot of significance in the metabolism, but we'll talk about it. 
Okay, 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 okay. I think that's it for this one. Okay, command. This is a really important reaction. Glycoside formation. Why do you think it's important? Show, show, glycosidic bonds. To make uh, polysaccharides. And disaccharides. نحنا we know إنه عم نقول everything around us is sugar. Everything is sugar. The plants, برا, uh, a lot of structures in our body. How did we get to that point? أكيد we need to build them. They're basically very giant these because they're very just demonstrative. They're different. See how it's different blocks. You're attaching them to make big structures. The carbohydrates, all carbohydrates, uh, especially the structural ones, we need them to build strong structures. بعض. So we need some kind of bond between them. This is the glycosidic bond or glycosidic linkage. Uh, but it's very important for disaccharides and polysaccharides. Just let's look at the picture and it can be easier to understand. Oh, now what do we have? We have our carbs. We have two glucoses. Tamam. What am I going to do? I'm going to come and take... What did I take out? Water. Water. What do we call this reaction? Dehydration. Dehydration. It's basically just a dehydration reaction. In the OH and the H, we O with it. صار عنا أليمج. صار هدول الاثنين they are attached together. تمام covalently bonded. And we need to يعني هلا إذا I does it break لحاله هلا إذا it's covalently bonded. It won't break لحاله. I need to put enzymes. فهيدي these are strong structures. That's it for the glycosidic bond. لا it's not it. Okay. شو يعني alpha one four glycosidic linkage؟ what happens the glycosidic bond is the same. Why, why is this important? We have a lot of OHs. When we're talking about sugars, we're talking alcohol in every place. Hydroxyl, hydroxyl, hydroxyl. But this reaction, why did it happen between this and this? This and this? Because this will give us different disaccharides or polysaccharides. So each, when we're going to talk about disaccharides, you're going to see each disaccharide. And then Bara is going to talk about polysaccharides. They have a specific type of glycosidic linkage. What do we mention? We mention is it alpha or beta? Shay, any alpha or beta? The three carbon. 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 Our oxygen, one by the mohe, this one with the OH, start one, two, three, four, five, six. And hala we'll see how we do it with the ketones, we have fructose. Okay, so it's really important when you look at this to know how to name it. Okay, hala we have something called glycosylation. I think Bara will go into details, yeah? Da? Okay, never mind. Shulfa it be glycosylation or glyco. Glycosidic ones, I know a lot of people mix them up. I used to. Yeah. Glycosylation is with anything other than carbohydrates. We are not putting it, we're not bonding our carbs with carbohydrates. But when, when, do we, when do I want to put my carbohydrate with something else? Why is this important? We said that carbohydrates are not just What's their main function? Awala? Source of energy. They're, of course, the main source of energy for our bodies. This command, they have a lot of other functions. And then structural, they play parts in metabolic processes. They play a lot of roles in our body. And now we need to be able to incorporate them with our other structures and form different things. Uh, uh, their other functions. We have two types. We have uh, we bond them to oxygen or nitrogen. Look at this. هون the OH شعملنا removed it وحطينا this group this is one of the most important molecules that we're talking about carbs bonded to other things اللي هي N-acetyl glucosamine من اسمه N-acetyl and then glucosamine هون this group basically these are important polymers in the exoskeleton of insects you know how insects, they have the hard shell outside? 
this is a very important it's not, it is 90% of what makes it up uh, and uh, this thing Croatia insects about the bahari basically but you need you need to know this very well come on we can link it to oxygen as we said okay uh, and this doesn't happen naturally we need an enzyme um, uh, true enzyme is small glycosyl transferase enzyme glycosyl transferase enzyme you're gonna see and know a lot of enzymes that you're gonna have to deal with but most of them are very self-explanatory and you'll, you'll memorize them as you're understanding the whole thing okay and then we have glycation see how the names are similar but see, you'll have to be able to differentiate what is glycation do you know does it ring a bell in any way the amyloids reaction reactant no. so this is something that happens in our body spontaneously, sharing spontaneously, and it doesn't even require enzymes. It's something that happens without the need of enzymes. Hassan, why do we need enzymes? To speed up reactions. To speed up reactions. When the reactions are spontaneous. They're spontaneous, or they're really not doing that much energy to happen. But this reaction, uh, basically happens between reducing sugars with uh, nucleophilic nitrogen, uh, nitrogen atoms. They react with each other. We have uh, something called a small amadori, amadori, yeah, amadori product. Should we see this amadori product? You're gonna talk uh, about inflammation later on. This uh, this product or this molecule, then deposits in our tissue. And it reacts with other things and causes a lot of inflammation and a lot of problems for people. So uh, it's important to know the, this, the name of this product, the name of the reaction is Mumailad reaction. And just understand you know, it's spontaneous, understand you know, uh, it happens between our reducing sugars and nitrogen. Uh, and why is this uh, something looked at? And it happens most of the time with advanced age. Um, we have seen something called uh, advanced glycation end products. Well, as I said, they cause inflammation, they cause problems. Hi. They cause inflammation, they cause problems. Or, uh, uh, they happen a lot with people of older ages. For, uh, like neurodegenerative diseases and stuff like that. But until you just need to no other points that I that I talked about. They didn't really talk about the mechanism anywhere. So you don't need to know what's going on. Okay. So here I have seen in the that might be caused by these these products. Like atherosclerosis, arthritis, neurodegenerative diseases, or diabetes. Again, you don't need to know the mechanism. You just need to know how can point to this is how the reaction happens, but it's not in the slides, so I'm not going to explain it. Do you want me to? No. Okay, let's from the reactions. That was the most annoying part. And let the, the cute parts. Important monosaccharides. Atoli, do you know Do you know what this is? Glucose. Bravo. Fructose. Galactose. Galactose. Glucose طبعا most important carbohydrate for our energy. Especially for the brain. Very, very, very important. Uh, where do we get it from usually? Food, bread has a lot of it. You know, most of the sugars it exists. Well, very important for our energy. But then we have fructose, we energy fructose most of the time. Fruit, exactly, from sucrose. Hello, we're gonna talk about disaccharide. The whole table sugar that we eat and in fruits. Kalan, it's a ketone, very important, one of the main uh, carbs in our body. But then galactose. Galactose is more important in metabolic processes than in uh, energy. So we need it in more. Uh, uh, in different reactions in our body rather than you know, just for energy. Where do we get galactose from? Yeah. Milk. Milk. Lactose. Okay, 
هذوك في كل واحدة عليهم a whole like paragraph written about different things بس حسيت انه اذا you guys read it you're gonna understand it فبلا ما اقعد اطول عليكم and I tell you everything about it على الفاضي you can just read it and memorize the most important details بس what I did think I should uh, explain is galactosemia تمام galactosemia you're gonna take a whole week about it uh, in year one inshallah it's a very common thing very common disorder شو بيصير عنا نحن galactose uh, in our body we uh, basically need enzymes to break it down or incorporate it with other things احنا الا it's most important use تبع galactose is in metabolic processes or we'll have to change it into glucose to get energy بس it existing هيك يعني حيكون مشكلة فنحن عندنا the specific enzymes that take galactose and turn it into glucose عشان we can use it شو بيصير عندنا ب certain people with genetic problems it's not it has nothing to do with anything acquired بيكونوا they're lacking or they have a deficiency in this enzyme شو بيصير galactose منأكله بيدخل على our cells and then it gets stuck there it accumulates مرة ورا مرة and it gives us really really bad symptoms في منهم إذا إذا it was not treated مثل mental retardation problems in the liver cataracts a lot of things ف what is the only way we can treat it right now no, the no. only way we can treat it is to not eat galactose فإذا we want to limit galactose is what what do we not eat يا فن do we need to know the Gene. names of the enzymes لا لأنه it's a whole different pathway uh, okay, uh, what do we do? We don't we don't eat galactose. When was the galactose again? Cheese. Cheese, milk, anything feed yeah, yeah. lactose, uh, anything dairy. Don't. As I told you, it's a very interesting topic, but you're gonna talk about it later on. Uh, okay, hey, Kawan Kano Hatina. Again, this is not something explainable, and it's just hafuz. And if you have different derivatives of monosaccharides, حكينا عن uronic acid اللي هي شو بنكون شو عملنا؟ Oxidation of the alcohol group. Of the alcohol group, uh, High glucuronic acid is one of them. Okay, used in liver to improve water solubility. Da, da, da. You're gonna have to just read it and memorize. Or amino sugars and amino sugars. Sugars are They have important functions, but um, yeah, it's in its memorization. Hello, the disaccharides. Come on, it's a very cute, uh, important uh, section. What's well, really easy? Show them the most important disaccharides when we're talking about our consumption and our bodies. Um, most importantly, we have lactose, as we said. Lactose, it's, 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 over, it's an overused uh, uh, topic, Sarah. We talk about it a lot. Menoim tuji, obviously milk, dairy products. Uh, a lot of people are lactose intolerant. Hala nhi ka ala. I'm lactose intolerant personally, but uh, yani I ignore it. <laughs> are, are any of you lactose intolerant? You don't know? Ready? <laughs> uh, okay. And then we have maltose. Maltose. Do you know where we find it? Starch. So, so starch, milk. Cellulovirus, uh, plants, the fibers that we find in our food. And then sucrose, come on, a famous guy. Meal sucrose, it's our table sugar. This is the cutest one. So, disaccharides, there are two monosaccharides attached to each other. What type of bond? Glycosidic bond. A glycosidic bond is what type of bond? Ether bond. Ether bond. Why ether bond? What is ether? Two alcohols. Exactly. We have an O here. And we have our alcohols attached to it. Okay, it could be alpha or beta confirmation. Why is it? If it was under, what would it be? Beta. Alpha. Alpha. I was just telling them the way I memorized it is that we have alpha is always better. But it's not true, it's not And beta is true for uh, And then when we are going to name it, we need to look at what carbon in this, what carbon in this are attached. So it's either مثلا, 1, 2, 1, 4. And I will talk about each one. Yeah. So it's easy. I give you something you can, you can name it, right? 
يعني tell me what type of hello tell me what type of uh, bond is this one this is your voice Hello. Hello. Why are you confused? Huh? No, one for some. So, where are we counting from? What are we We're starting counting in this one. Yeah. So one, two, three, four. One, two, one. So one, four. Is it alpha or beta? It's both. It's both. It's both. It is both. It's alpha beta. This is a unique situation. Middle sucrose. Look at this. Is it alpha or beta? It's alpha beta. It's both. Come on. Okay, let's talk about each one. Maltose in that is found in what? Starch. Power and maltose starch. Manata, do we consume it? A lot. We consume it a lot. Uh, okay, um, it's an intermediate. So we actually, when we when we consume starch, we know it's long change, uh, chains. As it's getting digested in our body, we see on these structures. Uh, what type of bond is it? It is two two glucoses, glucose, glucose, benaton alpha one four bond. Do you know how to draw it? Is that I, I told you to draw it. Yeah, we start from the carbon, and carbon attached to the fourth. Yes. Counting from the and it's going down. It's a grip down. Is it a carbon or a free? Sure. It's not sure. It's going to be obvious. Uh, but in these situations, most of the time, we call it that this guy, he is carbon number one, and American carbon, is. Keep it up. It's the anomeric carbon of the one on the right. So one on the right, sah, 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 sah. Oh my god. Yes. So yeah, so we're looking at the anomeric carbon. We're not looking at this. So. The free anomeric carbon. The free anomeric carbon. Exactly. So when we're talking about the linkage, when we're talking about the linkage, we're talking about that. Okay. Okay. And then we have our uh, lactose. Again, lactose, sugar. Very important, but what what uh, molecules make it? Unless you have galactose, galactose is Galactose glucose. Uh, what's the type of bond? But uh, one. Come on, glucose is equal. Come on. Yeah, this is what you were talking about, Hassan. Hello, Ahmed. Alpha and beta anomers. When we're naming the the whole disaccharide, we look at the hey, we look at the free end. But when we are naming the uh, uh, the, bond. the bond itself, that's when we're looking at the bond. So here it's alpha or not? It's you, it's alpha, it's. Oh, you, did you get it? And now we're naming the sugar. Yani lactose could be alpha or beta. But the bond is always beta. Uh, and Hadulit name, they are reducing. But then we have cellulose, it's what? Cellulose. Cellulose. It's found in plants, and here fibers. Do you, have you ever watched any type of uh, nutritional video? They, they talked about fibers. You know, if you want to lose weight, eat a lot of fibers. If you want your digestive health to be better, eat a lot of fibers. Let's be learn eat a lot of fibers. They're not, actually, they're not broken down in our uh, intestines. Should we see it? We don't have the enzyme for it. But should we see it? Now we eat it, we feel like we're full, but it's actually not broken down. We don't absorb it. And then it's excreted. So, uh, this is this is a thing to note. Does any animal, any mammal, have the enzyme that breaks down uh, cellulose? Yes, herbivores. Herbivores don't actually have it. They have microorganisms in their intestines that have the enzyme, not them. So that's really interesting. Again, it exists as alpha and beta animals, like it has a free end. So when will it when will it not be able to exist as alpha and beta animals? Yeah, but does this, why are they mentioning it? Is that they're all the same? When both animal carbons are in the bond. But the both animal carbons are in the bond. So we can we can have both variations alpha and beta. Okay, uh, so this is for cellulose. Again, mean here two glucose. So we have two glucoses, maltose and cellulose, which makes sense. They're both coming from plants. 
And then uh, we have Akashi sucrose, yeah, I said the cutest one, table sugar. Yeah, it's the cutest one, but it's kind of, it has a twist on the other one, the other ones. It is a non-reducing sugar, and uh, it doesn't have animals. Leish, let's look at it. Look at sucrose. What carbons are involved? One and one. What type of carbons? They're the anomeric carbons. Will we be able to have alpha and beta animus? No. We won't be able to. One or more. One or two. Fructose or fructose. The second carbon is anomeric. E? Yeah. One and two. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I will be number one, two, and it's fructose. So the anomeric carbons, both of them are involved in the bond. So actually, we will have alpha and beta. Uh, that's out of the way. Another thing is that it's a uh, non-reducing sugar. Same reason. It's closed, the anomeric carbons, but come on, it's non-reducing. Uh, and it's glucose and fructose, again, um, found as our normal table sugar. We can break it down easily. Uh, I think that's it. We'll, we'll bond is alpha, beta. Again, we said why, and the anomeric carbons, one alpha, one beta. One, two, let no uh, glucose and then fructose. Okay, do you have any questions out of this part? I think it's pretty it's self explanatory. If you have other details in the slides, you have to like go over to memorize it, but I said it's not, um, yani it's not worth taking time for. Hello, we have lactose intolerance, <laughs> yeah, I already mentioned, but let's try to understand the mechanism behind it. لما حكينا عن الجلاكتوس إلا we have a deficiency in the enzyme that converts galactose to glucose إلا where is that enzyme where does the galactose get entrapped inside our cells when we already absorbed it دخل على our cells and then we can't break it down and we have accumulation أما لما we're talking lactose intolerance the problem is in our digestive tract Il, uh, our body cannot absorb disaccharides. Lama, we're absorbing anything, we're absorbing monosaccharides. For any kind of breaking down of any bonds that happens in our digestive tract will be breaking down disaccharides, or polysaccharides, giving us monosaccharides to absorb them. For sure, we see that the lactose intolerance, we have an enzyme, it's called lactase, easy, I'm not going to have easy in the lactase, that break down. Uh, breaks down lactose to shu, glucose and fructose, so we can absorb both of them, glucose take them into our body. Huh? Ah, uh, sorry, yeah. Glucose and galactose. Uh, so this enzyme is not there. Should we see when we drink milk or eat anything dairy or anything that has lactose, the lactose will stay in our digestive tract, in our intestines. It stays there. Do you know about uh, osmolality? Did you take it? Yes. So we see when we have the concentration of uh, solutes more than the other area. What, what kind? It's going to diffuse from around into the digestive tract. We see the digestive tract, the accumulation of lactose. We can't absorb it. It's staying there. But we draw the water from around to our intestine. What will happen? Diarrhea, right? In addition to that, we have microorganisms in our uh, uh, intestines that actually do uh, consume the, the lactose. But what they do? They're going to get activated and they're going to start uh, consuming this lactose. What do they do in return? They're going through, they're breaking it down and getting sugars. What is that called? Cellular respiration, sah? Right? What's going to get out? Carbon dioxide, sah? Right? Gases. Yeah. So, حيصير عنا gases. حيصير عنا bloating. حيصير عنا diarrhea. And obviously that will cause stomach pain. And all these other symptoms of uh, lactose intolerance. So, this is basically the mechanism behind it. Again, what do we do for anyone with lactose intolerance? That's all we do. Uh, there is no other. It's not life threatening. Galactosemia. I told you galactosemia is way more dangerous. It's happening in the cell. It's already entered our body. It's happening in the cell. Everything is happening in the digestive tract. Bad a day or 
even less, the person will be fine. Uh, okay. Not with lactase, but there are other ways to remove yes the lactose. And you know, we have uh, lactose-free uh, dairy products, and then the pe people can drink it. Yes, and I think is that it. Yes, that's it. Thank you guys so much. Aren't going anything you want me to talk about? Keep the order for them. Yeah. Thank you. Allah barat. Take over. Thank you. All right. So we discussed about disaccharides and monosaccharides. We all know. They are connected with which which bond? Glycosidic bond. Sah. And we're talking about polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are polymers, and I think you guys already took polymers with Abil. So what are polymers? Of monomers. And what are the monomers in polysaccharides? Monosaccharides. So it's like this chain. So for example, one piece of it is a monomer, and it's just multiple monomers. And this monomer is the monosaccharide. It could be glucose, galactose, and we'll look into the types. Of polysaccharide. But and how do we dis define it? And the main three that we'll be looking at are cellulose, starch, and glycogen. All right. So what is the source of cellulose? It's plants. Starch is also found in plants. But the unique thing about starch is that there are different chains to it, and we'll look at them. Oh, we have glycogen. Glycogen is the only one that's found in uh, the humans and animals. All right. And yeah, what do they do? Well, they are uh, either storage, energy storage. Or they're structurally supporting the uh, 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 the person or the organism it is in, and yeah. All right. So before we begin, so we mentioned what the polysaccharides are, and, and before it, there's something called oligosaccharides. You guys know? Do you remember in EMS what does oligo mean? Little, Little or few? No. Then and what do you think oligosaccharides are? Small polysaccharides. Small polysaccharides. How much? Like 10 to 15. All right, so remember, you know, so we have a monomer, the monosaccharides. There's disaccharides. There's oligosaccharides, then there's polysaccharides. Tamam? And the oligosaccharides, we said, are 10 to 15 monomers. And as well, they are attached. Uh, oh, the, this, the unique thing about the oligosaccharides, which we will look at. Hold on. I had not, that's why I didn't have that. No worries. Uh, the unique thing about the oligosaccharides is that they attach to glycoproteins. Or glycolipids. Do you guys know what glycoproteins and glycolipids are? So carbohydrates with fats or carbohydrates with proteins. Exactly. So carbohydrates with a fat or carbohydrates with proteins. And they're used for many stuff like uh, recognition, cell to cell recognition, communication from cell to cell. Now something important about oligosaccharides are that there are two types. And linked oligosaccharides or linked oligosaccharides. Now I remember in the first quiz, I meant sorry, the midterm, they brought us a question. They showed us a uh, uh, image of uh, an oligosaccharide, and they said, "What type of oligosaccharide is this? Is it N-linked, O-linked, and which one exactly?" Now let us discuss how they are different. Let's look at this picture. All right, let me use blue as O-linked, red as uh, the N-linked. Now the N-linked. Why do we call it N-linked? First of all, we have asparagine. Asparagine, do you guys remember from proteins? Mm -hmm. What type of uh, amino acid is it? Yeah, it's like amyl. Yes. Sure. Yeah, so it has a NH group. This NH group attaches to the uh, oligosaccharide. Understood? Mm -hmm. But any asparagine or uh, this NH, uh, this asparagine molecule attached to any sort of oligosaccharide, we call this We call this an N-linked uh, oligosaccharide. So imagine this, and then we have this, like an oligo group of 10 to 15. So this is an N-linked, understood? So it's attached to asparagine through an N-linkage that uh, we talked about, the glycosylation bond. And then we have the O-linked. The O-linked, is of serine, mostly serine uh, amino acid. Uh, do you guys remember where serine, which group it was? It's a neutral group. Yes. So it, it, it's linked through this O bond to the oligosaccharides. But now we have N linked or O linked. What was the N linked? Let me change them. I saw the, what was the N linked? Aspergine. Aspergine. So red or blue? Red. It doesn't matter. But Red. So, what's uh, how is it end linked? Because connected to the nitrogen. To the nitrogen of the aspergine group. 
and the O-linked, why is it O-linked? Because it's connected with O-linked. Oligosaccharides. So we have oligosaccharides, they're 10 to 15, and they have two types, N-linked and O-linked. And then here's a quick way to see it. Uh, and one other thing that I forgot to mention, the huwa il high mannose. Now, what do we mean by high mannose? That means there's a high content of mannose. Imagine mannose as the green part, so you have a lot of mannose. So N-linked, high mannose means N-linked, and it has, the oligosaccharide has a lot of mannose units. That's it. All right. So from here, can you guys guess? Let's start with the pink circle. This one. I think here. The one that's top here. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Okay. O linked or N linked? R raise your hand if it's N. <clears throat> N. N. N as well. All right. We can see the answer. How about this brown ring? O linked? Alright. How about in light blue? N linked. Now look at the key. It is which molecule? No, with the, it's green, like those green balls. What, what molecule? High manos. Yes. Well, honestly, they did bring it once. So I think, you know, it's good to memorize. And you don't know, maybe this year they'd like to change it. But yes, you guys are right. This was N-linked glycan or N-linked uh, oligosaccharide, and this was the O-linked. Good job. But now you guys remember the uh, oligosaccharides and their different types. Now we move on to the biggest group, or the biggest family, which is the polysaccharides. And the polysaccharides, before I begin, the size of the polysaccharides, and let's say you know, this is a polysaccharide, you know? it could be found like this, or like this, or like this, but it's the, still the same family. It's still have the same components. Could be starch, uh, uh, glycose, uh, sorry, and uh, glycogen, and uh, uh, all the ones that we have mentioned. So, all right, polysaccharides, the two different types. We have the homoglycans and the heteroglycans. So, what do you think the homoglycan mean? What does it mean? So, one type or the same type of monosaccharide used as the polymer or the monomer for, to make this polymer. So for example, we have uh, multiple glucose. So this gives us starch, glycogen, cellulose, and chitin. And how about heteroglycans? Two or more, Two or more different types of uh, monosaccharides making up a polysaccharide. But in polysaccharides, we have two types, homoglycans and heteroglycans. Homo, same type, hetero, different type. Oligosaccharides, we have two types. What are they? N-linked and O-linked. The N-linked is linked to what amino acid? Spergine. Spergine. And the O-linked? Serine. All right. Tamam. Now we can look into, de into depth to the uh, types of polysaccharides. We start off with starch. Do you know where we find starches? Yeah. In plants, yes. In uh, fruits, uh, vegetables. All right. So... They have the, uh, uh, the glucose molecule, and it's a repeated unit. Now, the different thing about starches is that there are two types of, uh, you could say, strands or uh, types of chains. They have ones that are called amylose and ones that are called amylopectin. So amylose is a long unbranched, meaning they have no branches. But mustaqim hek, mustaqim hek. And uh, yes, they're helicase in structure. What was what was helicase? What do they mean by helicase? Um, you guys remember? Say DNA. Uh, it's, hey, well, it's like a spiral. Hey, well, H. Yes. And you have the alpha one for linkage. Alpha and uh, we said that which one we cannot uh, what's it called digest in our body? Cellulose. Yeah, cellulose, and it is what type of bond? Beta one. Beta one four. So familiarize yourself, and no beta 1,4 we cannot digest, but alpha 1,4 we can. And we'll see, we'll look into the digestion. Now amylopectin is a branched. So this one's different than amylose. Amylose was unbranched and helix. Amylopectin is branched. So meaning it does have the 1,4 bonds, but after a repeated unit, about 20 to 25 uh, monosaccharides of glucose, you have a branch. And how does this branch form? It's through a uh, alpha 1,6 bond. So, all right, let's repeat. We have a starch, 
This starch has two types of, uh, uh, like, let's say, um, two types of strands. One strand is the amylose, which is alpha, one, four, and how does it look like? Helicus, yeah, so it's like uh, in a helical shape. And uh, then we have the amylopectin, and it is also a strand, but it has alpha-1,4 and alpha-1,6. And the alpha-1,6 is the one that makes the branch. Because, all right, if we kept having alpha-1,4, alpha it would have been straight. But once we introduce the alpha-1,6, we see it in this, uh, in this shape. And no, a branch. Yes. So it'll become like this, like a branch. Have you understood till now the starch? All right. Still, we can see in the starches now the digestion. Let's say you eat an apple. You know? This apple has starches. So we start off in the mouth. The mouth has an enzyme we call amylase. Yes, the saliva amylase. I think you guys took it before, no? In the enzymes chapter? No? All right, no problem. So this enzyme, it hydrolyzes the alpha-1,4 glycosidic uh, uh, linkages within the amylose and amylopectin mainly the amylose. Now, uh, the digestion then continues into the small intestine, and the pancreas, it secretes also an, am an amylase that furthermore breaks down this alpha-1,4 and gives maltose and uh, maltotriose and dextrins. Now, this uh, digestion part isn't quite like common in uh, exams as exam question, but maybe this year they decide to bring it. However, it's important to know that it starts in the mouth and then it ends uh, in the small intestine where the pancreatic uh, enzymes break it down into, as we said, maltose, maltotriose, and dextrins. Understood the cycle of starches? Would you like to repeat it again? Well, you guys got it. Tell them. Now we move to glycogen. So what is glycogen? Have you guys heard of it? Akid. Now what is its main function? Storage, 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 yes, of energy. Now it's found in vertebrates, all right, and abundant in the liver. Glycogen is similar to amylopectins, but the difference is that it has even more branches. So it's not 20 to 25 monosaccharide units. It could be from anywhere. So you could see the branch, branching points is from everywhere. And uh, also that it has, like, for example, between every 8 to 12 uh, residues, you have a branch. So now we can see that it branches out more. So they could bring you a true or false question that says uh, which, which of the following is uh, uh, correct about glycogen. It has uh, less branches than uh, amylo, amylose or, sorry, yes, the uh, amylopectin or it has, uh, it's found in the liver. So you guys now know the specifics of glycogen. So if I repeat, this is in the, uh, a store, it's like a storage unit found in the liver with uh, more branches than the amylopectin. So that's the main important point about glycogen. Now yeah, here you could see it, the amylopectin, do you see the branches? So you could think of it as 20 to 25 uh, monosaccharide units, then we find the branching of it. And here in glycogen you see that it has less uh, spaces between. So this is a branch, this is a branch, branch, and then branch. So you guys could see now that there's a difference in branching between the amylopectin and glycogen. Also, as uh, Lord mentioned, the reducing ends. So basically when you have a, uh, a strand that has m multiple branches, you'll have one reducing end with multiple non-reducing ends. You understand, you understand me guys? Or would you like to repeat? So if I say, for example, in, uh, yeah, in amylose, how many non-reducing ends would we have? One. 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 Because? Because one, because we have? Yes, one. there's no branches. So we have one reducing end and one non-reducing end. In amylopectin and glycogen, we have multiple reducing ends. And in glycogen, would we have more or less? More non-reducing ends. ends, exactly. And now we reach cellulose. So cellulose is the one that has the beta-1,4 glycosidic bond, and this one is the one that we cannot digest because we don't contain the enzyme that breaks down the beta-1,4 uh, glycosidic bond. Now, if we look at cellulose, we see that it's structured like a sheet of paper, if you think of it. So it's under each other, like this. 
It's tough. We cannot break it. That's why we, uh, the enzymes that we have, <clears throat> they cannot break it down because it's too tough. And he, also, we said that it's, it's found also in uh, bacteria. It's only bacteria can break it down. And yeah, I think that is it for cellulose. And they make up the cell walls. Now, I think we finished with the uh, three main types of uh, uh, polysaccharides. So let's repeat. So we have starches. What are starches made of? What are starches made of? The strands of starches. There's glucose. All right, glucose, and they make alpha one for bonds through the amyl uh, amylose. No? And then what do we have with the amylose? Amylopectin. Yes. So, yes, the amylose is one four glycosidic bond of glucose. Then we have amylopectin. It's 1,4 and? 1,6. One, <coughs> yes, 1,6. And, all right, where does the digestion begin? In the mouth. And where does it uh, end, or where does it? Yes. And what produces the uh, amylose uh, enzyme in the small intestine? The pancreas. All right. Then we have the glycogen. What do we know about the glycogen? It's the storage, energy storage unit. How is it formed? Like, how many, uh, is it branched, linear? Branched between how many residues? Eight to 12, yes. And it has multiple non-reducing ends, all right? Then we have the last one, which is? After glycogen, which one? Remember, the one that we cannot digest. Cellulose. Cellulose is formed in what linkage? Uh, beta 1 4. And how is it? Is it parallel or is it straight line? No, yes, it's parallel. So it's like a sheet of paper. All right. And yeah, that's it. Now, heteroglycans. We said what are heteroglycans? They are? And not all. more? More yeah, so the N and O and N and O are glyco are oligosaccharides. Yes, so they are one or more different monosaccharide units. All right, and they could be attached to proteins. So one family of them could be attached to proteins, and we have the proteoglycans, which we'll explain, and the glycoproteins. And then we have ones that are attached to lipids, which are the glycolipids, and then we have ones that are attached to phospholipids, which are the glycophosphatidyl. All right. And then we have, yeah, the ones that are the oligosaccharides that we have mentioned, the O and N. And, yeah, so for example, if we have a galactose, and it's attached through a beta-1-3 uh, to the uh, N-linked aspergine group, we could call it gal-NAC. Yeah. And I think that's it, yeah. So the heteroglycan, what's important about it is that it's attached to a different... Uh, monosaccharides and different uh, what's what we call different macromolecules like we have the proteoglycans and the glycoproteins so they are glyco uh, the the monosaccharide attached to a protein and then we have the ones attached to lipids so we have glycolipids and then we have ones attached to the phospholipids all right so yeah this is an example Oh, in collagen, we have the uh, galactose beta-1-3 uh, bond with the serine. And I think we have also, yes, the, gly the glycan core structure, which is a mannose. Attach I don't think you have to memorize it, but this is an example of the uh, heteroglycans. Yeah, now the glycoconjugates. From the name, what do you guys think glycoconjugates -con are? I think so, glyco and conjugates. Yes, something like a monosaccharide or a polysaccharide or the disaccharide attached to something which is not of the carbohydrate family. So those are what we call glycoconjugates. We have different types. We have glycoproteins, we have glycolipids that we discussed, proteoglycans and uh, the ptidoglycans and the GAGs, which is one of the important things that I'll be talking about, and the rest. Now the most important are the proteoglycans, glycoproteins, and the GAGs. We start off with the proteoglycans. So what do they consist? They consist of, from the name, proteoglycan. What do you think? They have more carbohydrate or proteins? Proteins? Who says 
You say carbohydrates, which one says, who says carbohydrates more? All right, who says more proteins? Yes, so it's more carbohydrates. You can think about it from the family name. So proteo means protein, glycans means the carbohydrates family. So think about it. Proteoglycan, this one has more carbohydrates. اسم العيلة, تمام? So proteoglycan consists of a core protein with long unbranched polysaccharide chains. And from those, you could have either O-linked or N-linked, and it gives the glycose aminoglycans. Now, oh, an important thing about the, uh, the GAGs itself is that it is negative in uh, regular physiological pH. What do we mean? Meaning in the body, we find it in a negative, uh, in the negative spectrum. Do you remember amino acids, the negative, the basic are positive, the negative, yes, are acidic, and there's neutral ones. So those are, they are more negative. So, and because they are negative, they trap more water molecules. So they have small masses, yet big volumes. Why? Because they attract water molecules. And we'll see that there's a disease that will come up that we'll talk about uh, what if we have a lot of those molecules. And yes, they are found in the collagen. You could find them in uh, the elastin, which is a protein, and the fibronectin, and flexible cartilages. So yeah, that's the main idea of uh, the GAGs and protein glycans. And here are more. So basically, we have the uh, GAGs are composed of repeating disaccharide units. So disaccharide, 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 and then they make up the polysaccharide. And they contain a uronic acid. You guys remember what the uronic acid was for the ones that were here? Yeah. How about you guys? Do you guys remember what the uronic acid uh, is? And uh, you remember the structure of uh, the glucose? Uh, the yes. So we have uh, the aldehyde group on top. And what group do we have on top? Just H2O with the OH, right? So this H2O with the OH, if we oxidize it, we have a COOH. We have the carboxylic acid group. So this carboxylic acid group, when attached to this repeating unit of disaccharide, we have uh, GAGs, the GAGs. Now there are five main classes of GAGs. We have the, uh, hy uh, uh, the uh, hyaluronic acid and the chondroitin uh, sulfate, the dermatin sulfate, the keratin sulfate, and the hyperin sulfate. Now for us, they didn't mention it much. However, I think maybe for you guys, it's important to know the different classes of them. They have similar functions, however, they differ slightly. For example, dermatin is mostly found in the skin, uh, helps with structure, and uh, the heparin uh, helps with the creation of the uh, heparin molecule that helps in the coagulation and, uh, yes. So, and we have mentioned that they are negative at a uh, physiological level. And yes, they attract one. All right, here are the, uh, the different uh, classes of them and their structures. So of the chondroitin sulfate, it's composed of glucouronic acid and an N-acetyl D-galactosamine. So here's the N-acetyl group. That's what we call it, the N-acetyl D-galactosamine. Then we have the l hydrouronic uh, acid with N-acetyl D-galactosamine, which gives dermatin sulfate. Now it's important to remember this molecule, the l hydrouronic acid, all right? And then we have the D-glucouronic acid with the D-glucosamine. And then we have, again, the l hydrouronic acid, but this time with D-glucosamine. So one gives heparin sulfate, other gives the heparin that we usually use in our skin and our bodies. We need to memorize it? Now the structures, no, you don't need to memorize the structures. Just memorize the families. Not the, the names are not uh, important. Only the l hydrouronic acid, because we're going to talk about the disease uh, that would happen if it accumulates. Yeah, now glycoproteins. This one, what do you think? Does it have more proteins or uh, carbohydrates? More proteins. proteins, all right. So this one is similar, are proteins that are covalently linked to carbohydrates. So that one was a protein core with multiple branched uh, uh, polysaccharide units attached to it. And yeah, the carbohydrate composition of the glycoproteins is shorter and branched. I have a uh, table at the end that shows the difference between glycoproteins and uh, proteoglycans that would help. So we'll look into it. Yes. So here the structure, the multi-domain core protein. So the proteoglycans has a core protein. This one is an oligosaccharide chain, covalently attached to uh, many proteins. 
the proteoglycans, as we said, are found in connective tissue for the collagen, for the skin, and whatnot. And we have the glycoproteins. They are in self surface, uh, the cell surface for uh, they help in cell to cell recognition. Here we said combined with collagen to form cartilage and the modulation of cellular development, meaning the growth of tissue and the growth of skin. And uh, and we mentioned the cell to cell recognition. Yes, here the content. 50 to 60 percent of proteoglycans are of carbohydrates. So 50 to 60 percent is carbohydrates. Here it's 10 to 15 percent carbohydrates, mainly proteins. And here they're mainly negatively charged. Here they could be or could uh, might not be negatively charged in the regular physiological level, depending on the chains that are attached to it. And yes, here are the families. So chondroitin sulfate, dermatin. Uh, sulfate, the uh, hep sulfate, and the keratin sulfate. Here are collagens, mucins, transferrins, and the immunoglobins. So you, uh, we, we're going to revise it again. All right, back to now the important thing that I've been telling you about the L uh, hydrouronic uh, acid. So if we have uh, a deficiency in the enzyme uh, called alpha L hydrouridinase, we would have an accumulation of the GADs. So what's, why, why is it bad? We said that what are guys used for? The, to help in cell, yeah? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, that's the... Yeah, so it helps in the uh, binding to collagen, uh, cell repair, growth, and all that. If we have access of this uh, uh, protein, what would happen? And polysaccharides. What would happen if we had extra GADs? You see it here. And there'll be accumulation of, uh, for example, fats in the forehead, there'll be a hump in the back, like this. But when we have a lot of something that's, so if we have a lot of builders, they will, stop, they will start building and they won't stop. So we need someone to tell them to stop, like a manager. So you could think of alpha l hydrouridinase like a manager. It stops them from continuing this cycle of building, repairing, and uh, constructing. So I think they brought one question in our midterm about uh, Hurler's uh, syndrome. And he said, which uh, enzyme does it target? So it's alpha l hydrouridinase all right? And I think that's it for our uh, session. But let us repeat the difference between proteoglycans and glycoproteins. So which one has, wait, let me move the slide. Which one does cell to cell recognition? Proteoglycans or glycoproteins? Glycoproteins, yes. Which one is, uh, uh, which one may cause Hurler syndrome if accumulated? Uh, Proteoglycans, yes. And the, yes, and as you said, the hydro uh, urinase. All right, what else? Hmm. The charges, which one has negatively charged all the time? Proteoglycans. Which one may or may not be uh, negatively charged? The glycoproteins. Uh, oh, which one uh, has collagen, mucins, and uh, those and the immunoglobins as their families? The glycoproteins, yes. And what families do we have in uh, the proteoglycans? Heparin sulfate, keratin sulfate, dermatin, yes. So those you can memorize by yourself. So in summary, we could say that carbohydrates is a lecture that you need to memorize more than just uh, read and look through. It's more of memorizing than understanding. And best of luck in your midterms. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.